once we left Aviano to come to Travis Air Force Base here. That violence in him came out. It was a Friday night. We had a football game. We was playing. Steve had a real good game. Yo, man, can't believe how good you were in that game. Steve comes up to me, and he says, look. Check this out. Look at that guy talking to my girl. Steve had this little girlfriend that was at the football game. And she was standing up at this fence talking to this dude. Steve put on his helmet, strapped it up real tight, and said, watch this. And he took off running full speed and just put his head down. The guy didn't have no clue what was about to happen to him. He turned around right at the last second. People started screaming. He really, really hit that guy hard. Helmet uh, right into the guy's forehead. The guy fell down and started rolling, holding his head, and blood was just gushing. Sheriff's deputies ran over there. One of them grabbed Steve. Steve grabbed him, threw him down. The other one grabbed him and couldn't hold on to him. Steve got back on top of that guy, and it took about five or six of us to get Steve off that guy. I've never seen Steve uh, ever, ever like that before. He was so, so upset. He could have really killed that guy. And all he was doing was talking to his girlfriend. Everybody saw it. Think he got in trouble? Nope. He didn't. The sheriffs didn't press charges or nothing. The school didn't want to hold Steve accountable for anything that he did because he was a good football player. But I asked him, I said, are you crazy? Man, why'd you throw that cop down? He's just like, he's in my way. He's just, no, no, expression, nothing. That's when I knew that he has it in him to really do some damage to somebody and take their life. I had a job. Yeah, I had access to money. Steve, he didn't. And the only way he could get it was to steal it. And uh, as time went on, it, things it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And, and the stealing just got worse. And one night, we walked up to the school. He said, I got something special to show you. He pulls out this huge crowbar. He took the crowbar broke a window out. I was scared out of my mind. I thought, when he broke the window, I thought somebody would definitely have heard that. What are you doing? He went in there, got the safe, this big safe. He's struggling with it. So I helped him get it out. And I'm like, where'd you get this from? He said, the principal's office. Here we go. Put it down. He tries to open it, busts it open. Yeah. It had over $2,000 in it. And he hands me about 100 bucks, and he keeps, he keeps all the rest. And Steve started stealing bigger things, like a motorcycle, money from uh, our neighbors. 90% of the time, he never got caught because I uh, was looking out for him. The reason that I went along with Steve is because I was scared. I felt that I had to do it, or there'd be repercussions for it. Obsession for money for Steve meant that he'd get it any way he could. I know he was really desperate, but I didn't think he was desperate enough to kill. When Steve went off to college, I thought for sure he'd stop. He's going to concentrate on sports and do well. I just knew that he'd stop, uh, and he didn't. Steve was actively being recruited by bigger schools other than uh, Chico State. I don't understand why you even want to go there. But he chose Chico because Chico in Playboy magazine was the number one party school. Regardless, I have to get an apartment. And he uh, was trying to tell my parents that he didn't want to stay on campus, that he wanted to stay off campus, and that he needed X amount of dollars for this to happen. Do what you want to do but we're not paying rent for you. And they said no. 
you got a free ride to school, why don't you stay on the campus so you don't have to pay? And that's not something that he wanted to do. That's where I came into the picture. I had a job, I had a check, steady check coming in. How about you? Want to help me out? Sure. How much you need? And I helped him. That's the worst thing I could have ever done. I shouldn't have done it. That's when it all went to hell. Okay, so Steve came home for New Year's. So it was right around that time frame. And uh, me and him went to a gym one night. You're all right. You've been quiet all day. When we were walking home. He told me, I have uh, something to tell you. And it's something that I did. And you can't tell nobody. What stays between us? Got it? Yeah, of course, man. And I'm like, OK. I'm thinking, you know, he done broke into something. Or, you know, that's what I'm thinking. And he's like, uh, I really messed up. And I was like, what do you mean? It's like, I, uh, I took some people's lives. I killed some people. I'm thinking he's joking. I asked him who were the people that he murdered. And he said the people that hired me to work at their house to mow their lawn. He got behind on payments, on rent. He had a bunch of hot checks out there. The school's uh, employment department found him a, a job cutting grass. They lived in a prominent neighborhood. That's why he targeted them. And he said, I needed money. And the only thing I could think of was to go rob them. And he starts telling me in detail what he did. He told me the lady answered the door. He rushed in, got her down on the ground, and she was screaming. Her husband heard he was in a wheelchair. He comes in there. Steve takes a fire extinguisher, hits him upside the head a bunch of times, put a pillowcase over his head, and tied him up. He had uh, Mrs. Kiapella write a check. He said it took her like three times to get it right because she was so scared, her hands were shaking. He told me that uh, he stabbed the man first so many times. He said that the man wouldn't die. He just kept making sounds. He just wouldn't die. Mrs. Kiapella was in a different room. He stabbed her so hard that he stood on the knife. I was just listening. He was just telling me everything. I feel my heart rate going up. My mind is going real fast. I didn't know if he was being serious or not. I couldn't tell. And uh, he kept asking me, do you think I'm going to get caught? Do you think the cops will figure it out? He says I tried to cover all my tracks in order to try to throw the people off. He wrote on the mirrors, this is just the beginning with her lipstick, and he pushed the skirt up to make it look like there was a sexual assault or something like that. I felt sick to my stomach, and there was a long pause. <laughs> That's when he started saying, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. None, none of that really happened. Relax, man. I'm just kidding. Real funny. <laughs> but. He never joked like that with me, never. So I didn't, I didn't know. We kept walking, and he tried to change the subject on something else. I didn't know what to believe. That night, I laid down to go to bed. I was trying to convince myself he's just joking. I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know whether to believe him or not. I just didn't know.